right, what up? Wimbush here. And in this part, we're going to composite everything together. Now, in part one, we built our campfire out using Cinema 4D, X Particles, and Redshift. Now, in this part, we're going to bring it all together in After Effects. We're going to use some of the Sapphire plugins that kind of give it some depth, give it some fog, you know, give it that atmospheric effect, some blurs, and other stuff. So, without further ado, let's jump right into it. So, I'm on PC, so I'm going to hit Control i and look for my render here. Now in Cinema 4D, as you remember, we exported this AEC file that will bring everything into After Effects. So I only need to select this, hit import, and now I have my folders over here. I have my campfire, I have my, my um, composition already made up, and then the special passes, I have my, my uh, main layer, and then I have my depth layer. So I could just actually drag these bring these up to this folder and I could delete the special passes just to organize a little bit. So let me double click on the campfire and you can see we have a, a whole bunch of nulls and that's because in the Cinema 4D project, I put the null on the, um, on the what's it called, the cloner. And so it's gonna give us actually a null for everything that was cloned, but I only want the main ones called null because that would be the center point. So all of these other ones I could actually delete so let me scroll down okay so i'm i'm left with two nulls and let me hit p yeah so both of them have the same exact position so I actually only need the one null so we got this one here okay and in our composition it gave us our our volume fog which is actually the fire so i'm going to delete that for right now because we're going to start with our main layer so let me drag this timeline down a little bit let me bring up the campfire layer, drag this over like so, and there we go. So we have our campfire layer all rendered out. As we drag through, we can see everything's there. All right, so let's add some levels. So I'm gonna go to my effects and presets, type in levels, bring in some levels here. Just drag this down a little bit to the right. Maybe drag this a little bit to the left. You know, just drag it until we get to somewhere we like. It might be too dark. So somewhere around there, I would say. It seems to work. All right, cool. So now let me drag this timeline up a little bit. Let's put in our depth. Now, if I double click, or actually if I drag my depth layer down, you can see that it's um when I exported it, it's coming in kind of gray. There's no dark blacks. And for our blur and our fog and everything, like the blacks are gonna be clear and the whites are gonna be what gets blurred out. So a way that I could fix this without having to re-render everything is actually I'll take my depth pass, drag it down here, make a pre-comped out of it, and then I'll just bring my levels in on top of there. Let me put this down a little bit. And I'm just going to drag my layer down until I get the blacks in the foreground. So right here will be about where my fire twigs and stuff are. So I want that to be a little bit more black. So let me drag these down until I find something I like. So I think that will look good because right here in like the whites and the grays, that's basically going to be where our fog areas are. And that's where it's going to be blurred out the most. And so... I think this looks good like that. So let me click that off. Now I'm gonna bring that pre-comp that I just made, drag that down to my timeline. And I'm gonna bring that to the bottom because we don't need to see that. We're just gonna use that to drive some of our effects that we're gonna be using from Sapphire. And so next, let me, um, I'll right click in my timeline here. I'm gonna make a new adjustment layer. And let's, um, let's start with some fog. So I'm gonna hit enter on my keyboard type in fog so I know exactly what I'm doing and then I'm gonna come back over to my presets and let's type in Z fog there we go so if you have sapphire we're going to be using uh, fog exponential and then for our Z buffer I'm gonna to want to take it down to our death pass that we just made and give it a second to kick in and then um, 
Let's see. So we can see our fog layer is giving us a little bit of atmospheric effect. Let me move this further into the timeline a little bit where the camera's pulled back. Oops, that's in too far. So, oh, one thing I didn't do was where it says Z buffer type. Actually, I want to make it black is near. That's why I'm not getting the desired effect. There we go. So now when I click up, there we go. So remember in our depth pass, let me double click that again. I wanted this to be our fog area around here. And then the white area, that would be totally white. And so that's exactly what we're getting with this, um, with the fog here. So my fog density, let's bring it. We don't want too much. So we'll say like 7.5 seems to look pretty good there. Okay, so that's that for that. So now let me make another adjustment layer. And let me type in on this one. Let's do a light streak. Let me type in light. Let me look for... Where is it at? Is it light leak or light streak? I believe it was light streak. Mm, let me try. Oh, that was light leak, sorry. Okay, yeah, so let me turn it off. You can see this is what it looked like before. So if I turn on light leak, it gives us a little bit of lighting effect on our scene that's kind of driven by our fire. You can see closer to the fire is giving us the red, further away is making it orange, you know, kind of like the emittance from a fire would give us. So that's just giving us a little bit more of the atmospheric effect that we wanted. And for that, we could just keep it on default. I'm gonna come back down to my adjustment layer, hit enter, and I'm gonna type in light leak like so okay now let me add another adjustment layer if you can see the trend i'm going to add everything on its own adjustment layer that's just the way i like to work so this one i'm going to um let's do the rack focus so let me type in oops let me type in dof down here it says our depth of field and then up here i'm going to type in depth no, that's not what we want. We want defocus. There we go. So you got sapphire defocus here. And everything goes out of focus. That's because in Z buffer, I need to select my, my death pass. And then also here under the Z buffer type, we want black is near. And there we go. We already get like a cool looking effect here so now it's just about adjusting our focal and our depth of field so focal let's drag this up a little bit because i want my i want my fire and my sticks here to be what's in focus so that looks good there and then depth of field let's drag this until we get the desired effect so about Point one, I think looks good. So this out here is kind of out of focus. We have it out of focus in the foreground, a little bit in the back, and it just adds that extra level of detail rather than just having a flat image all the way around. Like if I go to the start frame and let's go down to my light leak. Um, we can scale this down a tad bit. drag it back up okay so I'm gonna actually take my light scales down to zero and keyframe it because as our fire comes on then I want it to light up so about 30 frames in now let's bring this up to one and we can bring this down a little bit more okay so about 0.49 I would say there you go. So that looks pretty decent. 
So I'm actually going to hit Control S. Let's save it. So I'm going to name this one Campfire 2 because I was working earlier on another project. It's always good to save. Just hit Control S every now and then so you don't lose your project. So that's looking pretty decent there. We have our depth of field. We have our light leak. We have our fog. Let's um let's add some turbulence around this fire a little bit, kind of like a little heat map. So again, I'm going to make a new adjustment layer. And this time, I'm going to click on this little icon here to make it a 3D object in our Cinema 4 or in our After Effects layer. And what I'm going to do is go down to my null, hit P. Select my position, hit Control C to copy, and then hit P on my adjustment layer, and I'm gonna paste that in there. And so now what that does, it gives our adjustment layer the exact positioning of what our null point was. And I'm gonna actually click this off because I don't wanna have a key a keyframe there. But I'm gonna hit S. And I'm gonna just shrink this down a tad bit because it doesn't need to be huge. I just want to use this for adding some type of like heat distortion around the fire. So now I'm going to actually come up here to my pen tool and just cut out around my fire here. Just doing like a, a little loose, a little loose mask. It doesn't have to be anything perfect because what I'm going to do now is come down to my adjustment layer, hit M for mask. And then I'm going to drag this out and I'm going to feather my mask, let's say by like a hundred. And then let's name this one heat. And then I'm gonna come back over to my effects and presets and let's type in turbulence. Now After Effects has a turbulence displacement, but I'm gonna use the Boris one here. It gives us a little bit more options and I like the way it looked better. So I'm gonna use the BCC turbulence here. And now as you can see, let me turn off the mask and all that. So if I click off and on, you can see we're getting a distortion there. That's with that's with it on. This is with it off. So you can you can raise the intensity if you want by either going here or just dragging out the blue frame here. I'm gonna bring this down a little bit. I don't want it too intense, just a little bit. And I'm gonna bring down the scale a tad bit. Like so. Actually, let me bring up the scale. Because I want bigger waves on there. Cool. And then, um, yeah, I think that was it for the turbulence. Let's see how it looks in other frames. Oh, and as you can see, it's looking away from the camera, which looks kind of awkward. Like it's going on the Z plane and it's not rotating with the camera. So a way to get around that in After Effects and actually, let me bring up the, um, I'm bringing up two windows here. So this is our, like our 3D view. If I click on my camera, here's my camera here. And if I click on my heat, there's my heat here. So as you can see, our heat is not looking at the camera at all. And the way to fix that is if I come down to my layers, right click on my adjustment layer, and then come up to transform, come down to auto orient, and then in this menu, I could click orient towards camera. And that way our 3D layer is always gonna look at camera no matter which way it's turning. So let me click this and then click okay. And then you can see now it's facing the camera. So I can start at zero, it's facing the camera and all the way to the end, it's facing the camera. So that's just a little trick in there. You know, if you're working with 2D elements inside of After Effects and this, you don't wanna see like the side of it, then you can always have it look at the camera. So let me bring this back to one view. Drag this around a little bit. And there might be too much distortion. Um, let's bring this down. Let's see what 50 looks like. That's a little bit better. So we only want a little bit of distortion just to show that there's a little bit of heat. I can even drag my mask down a little bit. I only really want it to affect this little area. I don't want it to be too much. So, and you can adjust yours accordingly, however you see fit. I mean, control S, just save real quick. And then last but not least, I always like adding like a vignette to my project to kind of focus everything into the center. So again, 
I'm gonna right click down here, click on new, make an adjustment layer. And in my effects and presets, I'm gonna just type in VIG for vignette. And let's use the Sapphire vignette. And boom, it already looks like a night campfire scene right off the bat. Now you can um, come over here, you can adjust the radiant or the radius, you know, so it's more darker on the edge. I like to make it just a tiny bit darker on the edges there. Let me bring this back down, maybe to 0.88. Yeah, there we go, that looks good. And then over here, you can actually blur out on the edges. So it kind of gives it like a, I guess you would say like a tilt shift kind of look. So if I go over here, let's look at this edge in particular. And under blur amount, let's move this up a little bit. And you can see it's starting to blur the edges. And then that way we're getting our focus in on the center point here. And it's giving us like a nice soft blur into our scene here. And you can even soften the edge a little bit more if you want. So let's say 1.5, that might be a little bit too much. So I'm gonna just hit Control Z take it back to one and there we go so that's pretty much how i made the camp scene there and if you have like um stock video you can always add like dust effects or embers stuff of that nature or you can render out embers using x particles from cinema 4d i didn't do that for this example but that's always an option there as well and so um yeah that's everything i wanted to cover mostly covering some of the sapphire plugins showing you how you can really add like this atmospheric effect around your cg renders make it look a little bit more realistic and there's a ton of stuff over here as you can see you have the boar stuff you have all the sapphire stuff i mean there's a ton so make sure you go check out their website download the free trial try this stuff out and if you like it Right now, they're doing a 50% off at the NAB, but if you miss that deal, then you can always get 15% off by typing keyword Wimbush. So make sure you type in either my keyword or the other keyword that they have going on at the current promotion, and you'll get a discount on this awesome plugin. I've been using it a lot for some of my projects. But um, yeah, if you guys have any more questions on what I'm doing here, or if you wanna see another method for something else, just let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys again. I just passed a thousand followers. The next step is 10,000. So please continue to spread my stuff around the community. And um, I'm really enjoying talking to you guys and just, you know, learning together. So until next time, keep creating. And thanks again. I'll see you guys later.